Today we're talking about where to back up our photos. Diving deep into looking into Google Photos, Amazon Photos versus iCloud and Dropbox. And I asked a bunch of you guys who you're using to load your photos to anyway, and I found that we're using all of them. So let's kind of dive in and go through each of these. Number one, it's really important to back up your photos and make sure that they are safe because what happens if a hard drive crashes or if you lose your, your phone or something unexpected happens and you can't get to your pictures? If you have stuff backed up onto the cloud, you can get it from anywhere and you're going to be able to sleep better at night. I promise you because, I mean, I don't sleep at night, but I do sleep better technically because I know that my pictures are safe. <laughs> I don't like iCloud. I'm an iPhone user. Um, I have everything Apple, but iCloud to me seems so confusing. And every time I try to go access their cloud, it just doesn't really exist. It's like this thing in theory, but in reality, like it's not something that you can tap into, move your files around, get them very easily. It's, it's just not very intuitive to me. So I choose not to use iCloud. I know a lot of fellow photographers don't use iCloud as, as well. I've been for the last few years using Google Photos to back up automatically all of my pictures. Every day um, I just open the app and it syncs all the current pictures um, that I've taken and everything keeps up to date. But the problem is, is that Google is now giving me these little messages in my email um, saying that I'm almost out of storage and that on June 1st, 2021, they're going to be now charging for you to upload original resolution files. That's something that is really important to me as a photographer, especially um, I want to be able to have the largest file size for later if I ever need it. So it's really important for me to have. Um, and now that they're taking that away, I kind of concerned and I really started digging deeper into trying to figure out what they're doing like what's happening with the original raw um, the original file sizes is it something that we can pay for and get um, so I did a little bit of research and I wanted to share um, what they are doing is they are unleashing this new service called Google one um, and it looks like it is something that you could just pay for and you can then get more memory and be able to access your original resolution files. If you are not an um, iPhone user and you have a Google phone, one of the Pixel phones, um, they are grandfathering some Pixel users in to allow them to continue to have their original resolution files loaded. What you need to do though is make sure Google, photo, Google phone or um, iPhone aside, I need you to go in and if you're using Google Photos, go into the settings and take a peek at and look at what resolution that your photos are um, getting backed up at. Um, it should be in the settings function under Google Photos. On the desktop, it's easier to find. Um, so you can kind of know if this is even relevant to you or something that you should be worried about. Um, one reason that, the, that you do want to look at this though is that if you're loading these and they're not in high resolution, they're just not going to be the best quality images later. They're going to be compressed. They might not open on all devices. It's something that you really do want to have. I looked into Amazon photos. This one is getting some rave reviews. Um, if you are a Prime member, you automatically get Amazon photos included in your membership for free with unlimited full res resolu um, resolution backup. So, I mean, I don't know anyone who's not a Prime member these days, especially in the pandemic. So this is something to take a peek at because that's huge. It's already included in your membership and why not use it? Um, so the only thing with that is that it's only including photos. It does give you 15 gigabytes of um, backup for your video files, but if you have anything larger than that, which I take a lot of videos, so there's a lot, um, you do have to upgrade your plan to get some original resolution file storage of those. Um, but it's about the same cost as Google OneDrive costs. So they're about $10 difference, it looks like, in their plans. There's um, multiple different tiers. So depending on how many videos you have, um, you can choose just the amount of memory that you need and can go in and pay monthly or annually and choose which subscription works best for you. The thing I loved about Amazon is that they have a desktop app and they have an iPhone and Android app so that you can use it on your phone and your tablet and the desktop and it helps a lot to be able to load things and look at things and and really see what you have amazon is so much better at their organization and they still have all of the functions that google has with the facial recognition the ability to add albums to tag and name can keyword and share all the things are there. So this seems like it might be the better option, but Amazon, when they load them, takes everything and they um, rename your files by date. So all that jumble that went in, 
got just organized by date. So now I can go in by year, by date, by, by month. And usually when you're looking for pictures, you kind of have a, an idea generally when a picture happened. Um, time of year wise, year, like, I don't know, year, I don't know, I'm saying year, year, but like the year <laughs> and time of year, you have a general idea where these images might be. So now that they're in Amazon, they're in that format, they're backed up there. One also super duper duper cool thing was that um, on the Amazon desktop, you can allow the, um, the app to read a source so that anytime you, anytime you load new images to it, it will automatically back those images up to the, the cloud again. So I'm using that to mirror one of my external hard drives where I keep all of my real camera pictures and I'm having that automatically back up there too. So I need to go check it out. It, I did it yesterday. I loaded, I think it was three terabyte, two or three terabytes worth of data because I have a lot um, and I'm really just kind of trying to test this out and see what really works. Um, and it started loading. So I'm thinking that all the files are there and I'm going to go take a peek later today and see how they're doing. Um, it just was taking a while because it's a ton of memory. And uh, for that three terabytes of memory, I think it's $120 a year to have that backup. For me, that's peace of mind and it, I'll happily shell that out. I realized, wait a minute, I use Dropbox for my business and I've continually use Dropbox for years. And that's where I also sync my camera photos to. So um, I'm, I have two backups on the cloud because I'm crazy and I really do want to have everything safe. So I had been using the Google, the Google photos, but I also back up to Dropbox. So my camera has a function on there where you can automatically sync to Dropbox and it goes into a camera uploads folder. Those images are there as well. Um, I need to go back and take a peek at what happens compression wise on those and if how the taking them off works because they might get a little bit jumbled as well, but I don't think that they do on Dropbox. So um, I feel a little better because I've been paying $120 there too for this like jumble, like huge jumbo backup. Of, I think I have three terabytes there too. So I have a little bit more room to go to Dropbox and I might not need that Amazon photo, um, but I like having both. So that's just kind of giving you a little rundown of all the different cloud options. Hi, I'm Kiara, a pro photographer with over 10 years experience helping families and small businesses tell their stories. I'm a wife and most importantly, mama to a rescue pup and two rapidly growing kiddos. Subscribe below for my time-saving tips and tricks for keeping your photos, videos, and stories safe for generations to come.